Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant. Pardon me, come on now to the podcast. I'm your host, Rudy Rodriguez Showmont. And I got a rant for you today. Before we jump in, thank you so much for continuing to support of this channel. Oh, yeah, this is Rudy's Rant, where we talk facts and feelings. I keep forgetting that thing. And also, we have a partnership now with BetUS. So uh, check out the link in the description. Get your bonuses. If you like gambling, jump on with BetUS. Click that link in our in our, in our description. And... Uh, Check out BetUS and uh, place your bets on anything you enjoy betting on. But nonetheless, thank you so much for your continued support of this channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, follow, hit that bell, share this video, become a member, all that good stuff. Appreciate you. The topic is Caitlin Clark. Is she the biggest under 30 star in basketball? I believe she is, and I don't even think it's close. But Bill Simmons recently had a, a video that popped up that I want to play for you where he asked the question. And I'm going to let him reply, and then I'm going to give my opinion on all this stuff. So take a look. Is Caitlin Clark a bigger under-30 star than any under-30 star in the NBA? Yes. I think she is. Absolutely. Too. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, don't even think that's a debate. Her stardom, in a way, is it has changed Many conversations about sports, I feel like, especially women's sports. I literally did not care about women's college basketball 10 years ago in any way, shape, or form. So I think some things have moved toward just the quality to play is more fun to watch, but she seems to be some sort of catalyst that is just, it's like before and after, and now we're in the after. Part of it has to do with, it's, it's real difficult now for a guy to become famous in basketball at the collegiate level, but it still seems very plausible for a woman to do Well, that. this is, everyone's yeah, made this yeah. point and it's super important, but you have this history with these women's players in college for three years, kind of have a sense of their game. So when they come in the WNBA, you, you know what they can do. Is Caitlin? All right. So let's talk about what he said there. They, they, they hit on a couple of fronts. And one of the fronts was college. That's important. But it's not the only thing, and it's not the it's not the main thing. For one, if I think the NBA would be smart to open the doors to the high school to the NBA route again, I I really think that would be uh, it's, it, that's really important because high school players are being pubbed at a different level than college players for the men's game. If you, if you look at high school rankings like Cooper Flag. Cooper Flagg is arguably the most famous basketball player, not in the NBA, not playing professionally. It's Cooper Flagg. And Cooper Flagg was the most well-known player last year when he was still in high school at Montverde. So Cooper Flagg had a following at Montverde. He was popular as hell at Montverde. He was known nationwide at Montverde. He doesn't need to spend a year at Duke to increase his popularity. In fact, going to Duke might decrease his popularity because Duke is one of those teams where you either love him or you completely hate him. So you're not going to cheer for him. Whereas if he had gone straight to the NBA, you would see a guy who's probably being pushed at a very, very high level. Now, all that said, I agree with the, the guy on, on, the, on the podcast with, uh, with Bill Simmons where he says it's harder because college men's basketball players, for one, they don't stay put. They don't stay. To, they don't stick with one school. They transfer and transfer and transfer. That's for one. But I think it goes more. More. It's more than that. <clears throat> the NBA is an established league. All right. As an established league. There's no one that can come in that can truly make a difference as far as the league is concerned. So if you don't understand what I'm saying, what I'm saying is LeBron James, let's say he's, a, let's say he's 18 years old again. Does LeBron James coming into the NBA change the NBA today? No, he does not. Why? These guys are making $50 million a year. They have a, a a multi a billion jillion dollar you know television deal. They got all they, they make ridiculous amounts of money. 
NBA franchise franchises are valued in the billions. WNBA franchises, though, and the WNBA, none of that exists. So if you have someone who's special who comes into their game, you've changed the league. You've changed an industry. And that's what Caitlin Clark has done. Caitlin Clark has changed the industry. She is bigger than the WNBA. There is not a player in the NBA right now who could come in and be bigger than the NBA. For, for what it's worth, LeBron James at 40 is not bigger than the NBA. When LeBron James retires, we won't blink. I'm being real. We will not, people will not blink. They'll keep watching the NBA. Yes, did you have a, a little bit of a fall off when MJ, Michael Jordan retired? Yeah, absolutely. There was a little bit of a fall off. But even if there's a little bit of a fall off, that fall off does not cripple the league. If Caitlin Clark today decided, I'm not playing basketball anymore, the WNBA might crumble. It might realistically crumble because every move they're making right now is based on her, her presence, her impact, the TV viewership she brings, the merch purchasing that she brings, everything that she brings. They're relying on that for expansion, for growth of the league in terms of games, for media rights, you name it, they're relying on Caitlin Clark and they're using her as their chip. For Christ's sakes, the Unrivaled League is coming out this year in, in, in January 2025 in large part because of Caitlin Clark. They can deny it, but it's the reality. People are going to watch her play golf, for Christ's sakes. If she decided she wanted to go play soccer, they watch her do that too. <clears throat> Is there an NBA player that you, as a viewer, would pay for a plane ticket, a hotel, to go watch play anywhere in the country? Ask yourself that question. For one, you probably don't need to because there's more than likely a team in your city. As there's 30 plus, there's 30, what, 30 franchises in the NBA that cover pretty much every major market. And even if, unless you live in Montana or the Dakotas <clears throat> or Nebraska or, or somewhere in the Midwest where they may not have an NBA team, for the most part, every major metro area has an NBA team. So even if you don't live in the city, you might, if you live an hour or two hours away, that's still driving distance to go watch them play. I'm telling you that next year, next season, 2025, I'm going to go watch Caitlin Clark play somewhere live. I don't care where. It might be Atlanta. It might be D.C. It might be New York. I'm not sure. But I'm going to go watch her play somewhere. That means I, who live in South Florida, am going to buy a plane ticket, get a hotel, rent a car, and go watch Caitlin and buy, obviously, a game ticket to go watch Caitlin Clark play. Most there's not, an, there's not an NBA player under the age of 30, because that's what this was, under the age of 30. There's not an NBA player under the age of 30 that pretty much anyone would ever would do all that to go see play. Would you go pay to watch Giannis play golf? Would you wake up in the morning to see that? I know he turns 30 in like a week or so. Anthony Edwards, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, Victor Wembanyama. Like, I wouldn't. I got heat season tickets. Lap, and, and last year, Wemby was in Miami, and I didn't go see him play. I sold my tickets. Caitlin Clark's impact on her sport, on the WNBA, is a larger impact than any player right now in the NBA have any impact that any player in the NBA right now has on the NBA. You could have any number of players decide I'm not going to play basketball anymore and you won't lose an ounce of sleep. You'll forget tomorrow. 
think about the fact that last year John Morant missed most of the la- most of last season. Did you did you notice? Unless you're in Memphis or just a major John Morant fan, you probably didn't blink an eye. And that's the point. If Caitlin Clark decides I'm not playing, you'll notice. Everyone will notice. The league will notice. The league will crumble because of it. The welfare will probably end for that. I mean, I don't for the league. I don't know. It, it won't. It won't do well if Caitlin Clark was to say, you know what, I don't feel like playing anymore. Now she's not going to do that. But everything Caitlin Clark right now t- turns to gold. There's a reason Unrivaled was begging her, needed her. They need her. She'll need them. They need her. So when Bill Simmons says this, I go a step higher. I say there's not a player. She is the biggest star in basketball. The biggest star. That goes up to LeBron James. LeBron James is no longer, you may disagree with me, but but LeBron James is no longer must-see TV. That time has passed. That time has passed. LeBron James is a 40 year old, almost 40 year old man who plays pretty darn good on offense and plays almost no defense. And his team will probably end up being around 500 again this year, despite the fact that he plays with another top 15 player on his roster. So I don't think it's even, I don't even think it's a question of if she is. I think she's absolutely, and it's not close. Anthony Edwards. I love him. He's done everything he can possibly do to not become the face of the NBA. Jason Tatum, not a huge fan, but Jason Tatum needed to become be the Eastern Conference Finals MVP and the Finals MVP, and he didn't, and it didn't happen. It, it just right now, Caitlin Clark is on a completely different level than any professional athlete in basketball. And I I tell you what, she's probably a bigger star than any sports figure right now under 30 in the United States. I'm not going to go to the part points of soccer because the soccer community is crazy and European soccer players and so forth, Messi's Messi, Ronaldo's Ronaldo, Mbappe's Mbappe, and so forth. But American sports, primarily... NBA, NFL, Major League Baseball, NHL. She's a bigger star. Than, she's a bigger star to me than Shohei Otani. She is. She she is. I mean, obviously, she's not making the money he's making, and he has the ties to Japan. But as far as viewership, attention, would you lose? It? Would you miss? Would you? Would it be a big deal? If Otani didn't play for the Dodgers, the answer is no, because realistically, they won the World Series and he played like shit. He couldn't hit because his shoulder was jacked. He played like shit and they won the World Series. <clears throat> so they found a way to get it done without him. Indiana wouldn't win any, wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't win very many games without Caitlin Clark. But as far as the league is concerned, she's changed the league, man. She's absolutely changed the league. It's unbelievable what she's done. She Look no further than women's college basketball right now. There's not a game on ESPN over the next three days. Not one ESPN network is carrying one women's college basketball game. I had to watch LSU, NC State on the Flow Hoops Network, which is a streaming platform. And it was like watching high school version coverage. It was awful. The coverage, the the announced team, and all that stuff, horrendous. It's it was third grade level. It was awful. And that's what ESPN has not, has now done with women's college basketball. They've made it insignificant again. Next this year, men's college basketball will be more popular again than women's college basketball. Don't believe me? You'll see in March. 
There's over 30 games on ESPN networks over the next three days for men, not to mention the other channels as well. For women, there's none, zero. They're only on ESPN Plus or they're, or they're not on TV at all. So, yes, I completely agree with Bill Simmons. Caitlin Clark is that girl. Caitlin Clark is the most popular, the most, the most popular, the biggest under 30 star there is in basketball, men and women. No question about it. Let me know your thoughts on, the, on this topic. I'd love, to hear what you, I'd love to hear what you have to say about it because this is obviously a touchy topic because it doesn't diminish the men's game. The point being is that one man doesn't have the impact on, on that sport that one woman has on the WNBA. She has more impact on what she touches right now than anybody in sports. It's crazy, but she does. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'd love to hear what you guys say. This is Rudy's Rant. Facts over feelings. Like, subscribe, follow, become a member. Come on now.